Oh, shoot. Hello, everyone. I hope my mic's on and things are working. Wow, we got quite a few of you here. Let's see here. Pearl, welcome. Nancy, Danielle, Temple, Francine, Autumn, Deanna, and Chrisella. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome. Um, have I got a live for you today? It is where I'm taking you on a journey. I got all kinds of things in my head and I am so excited for today. <laughs> I, you think it all shuts off after I leave, but it really doesn't. And so, um, I'm just really excited that everyone's here. Welcome Peg. Welcome Loretta. I always love hearing where you guys are all from. Daniela, welcome. I don't know why, but my thing isn't refreshing to see how many people are in here. Um, let's see. Oh, <laughs> well, Deanna, that's a great excuse to not have to go horseback riding, even though I, uh, I, I, I love horses. So that is amazing that you can go do that. Okay. Um, for some reason, mine isn't refreshing. I might try to um, back out of it real quick and then go back in. So just a second. There it goes. I got it refreshed now. Oh, wow. Okay. Awesome. Well, welcome everybody. I'm so excited. Um, uh, I kind of got y'all in here where, to get everything that I want done today. I'm going to have to be on it. So, um, we're going to have a pastel pencil throwdown, of course, but like I, um, do, I, I do have a few changes. So, um, I also have, I want to talk a little bit about different papers today. It's been a big topic of in um, on my Facebook group. It's been a big talk topic here. So I actually have some of these different papers and stuff, and I want to take a moment to um, to talk about that too. So I don't know how I'm going to fit it all. It might go a little long today. We'll just see how it goes. <laughs> so the big um, thing I also want to talk to you guys about is um, I am monetized, and I'm really excited about that. My last. Uh, uh, live. I was telling you guys that that's when I got monetized that day. And um, so I want you guys to be aware that, um, especially my chat family here in real time, I don't know how that's going to go. I set everything on automated and um, it could do a commercial in the middle. Monetization, that's how I do make money, but I'm not like asking you to have to watch the commercial, but I'm just telling you, I don't know how that's going to work in chat. I don't know if it's going to um, put it in midway um, eventually I can set up those break moments and maybe say in the middle, Hey, I'm going to have a glass of water. I'm going to run this, this ad. And then, um, it will, uh, do that on more of an organized time. So I'm just going with it today. So, uh, your feedback is welcome. I don't know what you guys are going to see on your end. And so <laughs> we're just going with it, but I wanted to give you guys a heads up and, um, let's see. There are so many adverts on your replays. Oh, well, I guess that's a good thing. <laughs> so all I know is that, um, that it, it will run. Like, I think I'm getting one right now and I can't see on my phone, uh, what I'm doing. So that's quite interesting. So I don't know how it's all going to go and, um, you guys can skip them, but, uh, it's something new. So we'll just go through it and just see how it goes. You guys. So I know you can probably skip most of them. Welcome, Michelle. So glad you're here. And um, I'm really excited. TV just went to ad, but phone didn't. <laughs> yeah, so it's a new adventure. It's part of the journey. So I hope you guys will uh, ease into this transition with me too. So, um, but uh, ad and you disappeared. Interesting. It should come back. Um, I just hit mine and skipped. But um, I think having it on my phone is going to give me a good idea how it goes. But um, We'll just go with it and then maybe on the next live I can ask, um, I'll set it up to where I can manually put it in there and, um, and we'll just go with it. So I have so much for you guys today. And uh, the one big thing is, is this is just a printout uh, if you guys haven't caught on to that yet. I did a couple changes and I'm, I saved one of the flowers that I can walk you through and I'm gonna tell you everything I did. Because if I don't um, do, if I didn't do some of it, we wouldn't get through today. And I don't really want this to go into a part three and a part four. 
because I don't think it needs to. And um, so what I learned about myself, because I learned a lot about myself on this journey, is that um, the uh, I think it's better for me to draw and brainstorm my idea, even if it's just a basic structure, before I go into a live. And sometimes I'm thinking, oh, it's just simple, it'll be easy, but I, I, I go back and forth and, and it, at that moment, I think it gets the structure out for me. And um, that gives me a lot of um, ease and settlement when I go into doing all this other stuff. And I'm learning about myself along the way with doing these lives too. So, um, yeah, it's all new on this channel. I'm not sure how it's going to go, guys. So I hope it goes okay. I don't know if um, when the replays go, if it'll just be in a couple spots. But um, I don't know why it would make you have to reboot. Because I'm on my phone and I've had one and it just allowed me to skip it. So... I'm really sorry. I will definitely get it figured out. Um, it's I, I do want the channel to be monetized, and um, we'll just uh, go with the flow here. So hopefully it doesn't interrupt you guys too much. So I'm sorry about that, Daniela. I'm hoping Francine it came back. Welcome, Francine. And um, it's probably going to be a lot in the beginning, even though I set it up to be mid. So um, we'll see how it goes. So I'm going to show you that um, I, this is what I had. And then what I did was, is I went on my um, tracing paper. I love drawing on tracing paper. And um, I just really didn't like the petals, how chunky they were. And um, I had this inspiration, which I put in the link below. I, I don't know if I have it in this one, but I have it in part one. And um, the, uh, I just played around and just had that moment with the piece that I think I need. And so this is what I ended up drawing up. And what I did was, is I took the um, painting, I took a photo of it, and then um, I put that in Photoshop and then I printed out and it, this ended up being bigger so I had to play around with it a little bit. And then I took the same spots and I reworked them a little bit. So for me, I wanna be exciting about a piece. I wanna be excited. So that will motivate some of my changes along the way, especially if I let a piece sit overnight or things like that. So I have done this one and this one, and I've left this one to do with you guys so you can see it. Um, pastel is so forgiving. Um, in my classes, I usually, um, I, I always have them planned out. I don't do big changes like this in my class, but like I've said many times, you guys are on my leading edge when it comes to live. So. Um, to keep the lives really engaging and exciting for me too. I don't have them all planned out. Um, I, I basically have been coming up with an idea and today, um, on Tuesday, I just really went for it. So this is the drawing I came up. So I want to show you how to do it. So if you want to make changes like this on your own, you can do that. So I took this, I drew it up and then I put pastel on the back. I put a white pastel on the back here. And then I literally went over my painting and I'm going to show that to you and I um, transferred it again. I lined it up because you can see through it and then you're gonna see where we're at. So we'll show this one later to see how far we come. And this actually ended up printing out a little bit bigger. I didn't mean for that, but it happened. And so I already worked these guys in here, um, these two. And um, what I did was, is that once I had that transferred, I just put this over, I, I even made some changes along the way. So I put it over and then I just uh, transferred it over with the white pastel on the back and it literally made a white tracing. And then I went over it with my, um, my uh, carbon pencil, my Wolf carbon pencil. And when I went over it with my Wolf carbon pencil, which I can't find all of a sudden, um, then I just resupported it again. So it's a personal change. I mean, many of you probably liked it where it was. I totally understand that. Um, but I think it's also fun to kind of show how you can make changes with pastel. Cause so many of you are like not wanting to um, ruin the paper and all of that. I'm working on the UART sanded 600 dark 
sanded pastel paper. It's mounted onto a, a board, so I have a video for that. I think I'll, I'll definitely be having that in the um, description below by the time the replay happens. And so I mount them so they're easily um, to handle. And before I go there, I want, I think it might be good to show you guys the paper thing really quick about the differences of paper. And I'm gonna check up on chat. Oh, it looks like I'm hoping you guys are all okay out there. <laughs> so um, we're gonna go and I'm gonna show you the differences of why I can make this change on like UART, the sanded paper, and why it's a little bit more challenging with some of the others. So I'm gonna take just a couple minutes here and talk about um, the, the differences in paper. So pastel mat is the other paper that I suggest. And the pastel mat is right here. This is the UART. And um, I wanted to show you guys, like I did a little quick eye on the pastel mat. And you get about two layers maybe with the pastel mat. The thing that I can really describe with the pastel mat is it's delicate. You have to be delicate. A lot of pet portraits, um, wildlife portrait, people that they, they create phenomenal things on this paper. Um, fine art, uh, pastel portraits I've seen done on it. Not really for sticks, mostly um, pencils and maybe a pan pastel under. So once I put like a, um, so like, this is basically just one little layer and it's a beautiful paper and people can do all kinds of really cool things with it. But um, like fur and all of that, um, I was playing around and I was looking in um, a pastel group and they can do some great things with it. Now for me, I started out with this paper and I wanna show you the difference really quick. So like if I laid down my favorite color magenta and, and I put magenta up here. Um, with the pastel mat, you really have to plan your, your journey. And that's what a lot of the pet portraits and all that, they have them really drawn out and they know what they're gonna do. And they work from, very commonly, they work from one spot to the next, to the next, to the next. They don't work holistically all around as much. I'm just speaking from my own personal experience. I'm not claiming all of this to be the thing. But um, so if I go lay down without a plan too much on here and I lay down without a plan on my UART 600, I have more ability to, to make some ch changes here. So if I go add a tint to here and then I'm gonna add a tint to here I probably still have a few more layers going on here. Now, if I go with a, um, a pencil and I start, well, maybe a lighter pencil might work, but if I start working with a pencil, it, it, it can fill up pretty quickly here. Let me try, if I add a little bit more on there. It, the tooth does fill up where I can't do as much on here pretty quickly. Yeah, see right there? That, that tooth is full. So it's fine if you're working with pastel pencils all by themselves and working and building them up. But even with that, if I work it up and I go over with another color, I'm only going to get so much. Now if I do that with this, I can keep layering on here. See the difference? I can keep going. I can still add even another layer on here. So I just want you guys to see the difference of just, it's, it's just a beautiful paper. I've, I've created just even some really fun pieces with it. This is just before the class. I kind of sketched this up real quick to show you. But if I was working on this eye, I'd have a little bit more tooth to work with, but there's not a lot, a lot left. And so I'd have to be really cautious with that. Now here's the other thing about it. Um, if I go in and I want to make a change, 
um, it's a little bit more difficult to do that. And after I do make a change, I, I don't think it's, well, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. I can put something in. So it looks like I can make some changes on here. So it looks like you can do a pretty decent job and get a, a, a good ch change. Let me see if I can put it back in again. Yeah. And then on here, it just comes right off. So it is a little bit different, but you still, it looks like you can make a change without damaging the paper too much. So that's good news. I haven't really done that test. So I just wanted to kind of show that because I just have a lot of people questioning. The other thing I have is I did, um, the uh okay but right there with chat um i did this a while back and these are gessoed different substrates this is with gesso on matte board this is with gesso on um mixed media paper you really have very limited um layering on this one this one's just um not gesso it's pastel um ground but it's very similar as gesso this is on Arches watercolor paper. Um, this one is the black on um, a matte board. And you can see how I just end up where I can't really put as many more layers on, on here. It starts filling. So you run out of layers. And so if I wanna put pencil on here, I basically, you know, I have a little bit there, but I run out of tooth. And so these are all the same, um, they're just different papers. This is um, the mixed media paper with black and then with the pastel ground. And then this is UART. So I just thought of showing you that real quick. I hope it might help some of you guys um, just along the way. Uh, I get a lot of questions with the paper and so I hope um, that might help you guys a little bit. Oh, Lori's been out in the sun, that's great. Do you think the pastel mat is about the same as the UART 800? No, I don't. I, I have a pastel um, 800 in here, and I think uh, the pastel 800 is better. This is the 800 sample I got, and I keep putting down, oh, this is what I want. I think it probably holds pretty close to around the same. It's just going to fill up the tooth a little bit more. And let's see how far I can go on the 800. I still have all my lines. And then, um, still able to go. So I, I think. Yeah, I, I think it's still very close to the UR 600. I, I think you can get quite a bit in there. Let's see if I keep going on this with layers. So I put three layers on right there. I mean, I'm not really thinking about what I'm making or anything. And then I can still put pencils, details. So that's the, that's the 800. All right, so we have to get going on this, but I'm, if you guys have any questions about that, I definitely want to answer. Let's see. Thank you, Peggy. If you use the pastel ground, could you do another underpainting and then put more ground over and go again? I've tried multiple pastel ground and it's just the same thing over and over again. You just actually get to rougher and um, your, your pencil has a hard time with that. So like I've put two coats of pastel ground on um, like this one. This has two coats of pastel ground. And um, I don't know why I would put more on. It would just be fighting against the whole thing. So. Waiting for you art paper and Stabilo pencils. Oh, awesome, Danielle. La, I'm happy for you. Just asking for a creative friend. Is there a possibility in the future that you will host a live Zoom class project where we could create a piece together as a group and share projects at, and then nothing. Um, 
You know that's something I might do down the road. Um, right now, this is taking up so much of my time, maybe like um, once a month or something like that, I, I might be able to do that. Um, I probably wouldn't do it on Zoom. I'd probably do a private um, YouTube. And um, I'm also thinking about maybe doing something like that for members, I'm trying to think of a membership to do on here. So I'm throwing some ideas around and um, yeah, so it's definitely something I'm throwing around. I'm working on my new class right now. So um, that's taking up quite a bit of my time. I probably have another month's work of four weeks of work with that. So, um, but, oh, I have the UART 500 too. That, that, that works okay. Um, I actually have the 500 right here. I was just looking um, the other day because I was pulling it out because I'm going to be gone, you guys, in two weeks. I'm going to be gone for a week, but I'll definitely give you guys a heads up for everything. Um, this is the, the 500. Now, what I was going to test on there was how it felt with the tools. I, I think it's a little bit rougher on my tools, but... You can get away with using the UART 500. I don't have the 500 in the black. So the 500 has a lot more tooth. So you're definitely going to be able to build up on that. And so here, like this is a brand new crisp piece of thing. I'm gonna um, just erase it and then it's back to normal and I can use it for another project. See, there we go. Got to pull that out anyway. So I think the 500 is going to work okay with your tools. If your tools do start wearing down a lot, you're also new. So that's hard is like kind of figuring that out. So, um, I think that's fine. Um, Nancy, I think the 500 is going to be great for you. I find the pastel ground also lives big streaks. Yeah, I have to water it down just a hair to, to like it at all. Um, stick pastel, it works great for. It's a great underpainting um, for, it works with underpainting. You can add color to it, um, make sticks and do landscapes or um, just if you're starting with the sticks, it, it, it works great. But if you're working with pencils and the pastel, the pan pastel, it's just not as good because you need to be a little bit more delicate. And I find that's, that can be a, a big thing. Welcome, Laura. I'm so glad that you're here. I'm so sorry to hear that your internet was down. Well, I think I have everybody here and we had our little paper demo, Laura. So rewatch that because I did that paper demo inspired by you too. So um, we were talking of the Facebook group. So I did a whole little um, demo with the different papers. So um, definitely watch the replay on that because um, th you were inspired. I was inspired by you to do that. So, um, oh, so I just got an ad for my first time. I, um, it, it allows me to skip them. That's an interesting ad. So, but now I'm back, but, um, we'll just see how that goes guys. So Lori, you're, you're here and I'm glad you're here. So the ads are popping up. So if, I would love to chat with you on the phone about how that all goes on your end. So I'm sorry about your internet though. That is so frustrating. If my internet went down, that would be so frustrating. So I'm sending, sorry about that. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go and show you how I'm making the change on here. So for those of you that just arrived, I um, made the changes. I showed you how I did that. Um, I showed you how I transferred it on there. And I think this is a great like learning up, um, moment and I thought it would be a great teaching moment. So um, for you guys just to see what you can and can't do. So I'm just gonna go in here with my eraser, make sure my camera is I'm gonna see what this says on here real quick. It doesn't say anything about the, the ads. Okay, so I um, am just gonna erase where the petals are in a couple areas here. And it's a really easy fix.
So hopefully this inspired it. I'm going to still erase in here because there's black in there. I definitely, you know, just want to share with you guys how, you know, even though I have many years of experience, I still like to make changes here and there along the way. And, and a lot of that for this one was because I just didn't really realize that planning that part out was that important to me until Tuesday. So I'm using those black lines to guide me. And then I'm gonna go back in. I have my sharp, sharpened um, wolf carbon pencil. And then I'm just going to, the parts that I hit a little bit, I'm going really lightly. I don't want this to be too crazy. And then I have this other small mini eraser. This is a mono zero. Sometimes this um, gets caught in there and I can just hit some of the small bits here. And I'm mostly after just getting the black lines out. I can't wait to show you the transformation though. <laughs> okay. How do you clear your brush after using alcohol with gold? Water, alcohol? Um, honestly, I never really clear my brush. I designate brushes. Um, I still have that, that brush. It has gold on it. I just wipe it off on a towel. And um, if I really want to reuse that brush, then I would go wash it off in water and then let it dry. Oh, so I had this one little spot there. Okay. So now that I have all that done, I'm just going to start bringing in um, some of those spots. I'll wait to do the petals, but I'm going to um, start filling in these spots now. I'm just using the raw umber because I don't want it to be too white. Now that black tip right there, I'm going to erase that out because it will um, turn my, my raw umber into gray right away. We don't want that. <laughs> okay. I wonder if I missed one. Oh, I made the liquid gold with pastel and that was fun. I'm glad I'm glad you enjoyed that. I feel like I might have missed a um a question, but I can't see it there. All right. So, I'm And I I just didn't like how the petals were all like the same type of shape. I wanted to create a little bit of diversity in that. And um, it's always important for me to follow my joy and to be excited about the piece in its initial like core idea. Everything doesn't always go as planned. And the other thing I wanted to talk about was every painting um, has what I've noticed for my own journey they um, all have their own like story they want to tell. So like say I started out with this one saying I'm doing an abstract with a cruciform overlay, which I got the cruciform overlay um, going like in part one and I'll probably, I'll be abstracting this out. But as you're going with an idea, you, 
it's um, good to listen to your inner guidance system and really go, you know, let let it let yourself follow the impulses to do something other than that. Like when it's great to get you at the easel and to get started, but sometimes the painting has a its own like voice. And um, the more I, I learn to follow that and just let the piece develop into what it wants, um, I find that the happier I am. Like, because then I'm not fighting against what it's trying to tell me it wants the whole time. And I think that is a really powerful lesson that I've learned on my own. And so um, even if I have a certain creative process, if there's something that's speaking to me that I want to try, you know, go for it because that's really um, wh what you're meant to do is, you know, not to create all these rules that put you in a spot where you feel suppressed because if Temple was here, oh, she's here. There she is. Temple's here. She, she wouldn't like that either. We don't want the, no rules that hold, hold us back like that. And so... Um, you definitely, I think you just have to let the piece evolve on its own to a certain extent. And um, especially when there's uh, a lot of unknowns in it. And I find that intuitive painting to be really fulfilling. And um, if I knew everything was all planned out, I don't think I would have as much fun because I get bored. There's a little bit of black here, so I'm just trying to erase it a little bit more. So if I had it all planned out, I, I just don't think I'd be as happy. I think I'm going to put a little bit of violet in there. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so the, now I'm going to fix the outside petals. All right, so I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna use a different wand that's a little bit darker. And I, some of these times when I make these um, changes too, it actually helps me abstract the piece out even more because now I have all these like gaps and I don't really, um, it, it can kind of lead into some things that I think are really exciting. Like the eraser and making those shifts can be really powerful and over time, I've just realized they end up, the piece ends up being better when I follow those moments. The other thing I really like is I just had one stem here last week. So, um, I mean, on Tuesday, I'm going to unbury my piece here so I can show you what I'm talking about. So see how I had just these, these stems like that, um, sitting with it for a little while and thinking about what was bugging me about it, I could go and, um, put that cool cross down there with the stems. And I really like that. Like that, that's exciting to me. So those are the things that I'm feeling and um, I get really excited about. Well, we have a really good turnout today. Welcome everybody. I'm so glad you're here. Please don't hesitate if you have a question or anything like that. I, I don't mind answering questions. Um, so actually I'm gonna, I hit that a little bit with green. I'm, I've wiped it off because I want to clean this up right here. And then I'm just going to take some of that black I already have. And then we have that grid underneath. So I'm still going to play with that a little bit. And then it just puts that, you know, blends right in because it's, it's already pastel there. Now, the one thing I, I also want to add is some orange. So I'm going to play with some of this dark, Looks like my tool's starting to come off a little bit. I'm gonna add some orange in here in a few spots.
And that's going to help me bring up some of this really depth back here in the background. I wouldn't mind this area to be brought up a little bit so the flowers are on the same plane. And so I'm bringing up some of that darkness slowly. And, um, and then what that will allow me to do is kind of blend in some of the, the flower petals so they'll blend in a little bit more naturally. Do you find while working on the dark paper that the pan pastel black reads as number one 100% on the value scale? I love your black spaces and your paintings. Actually, I don't. Um, um, I was talking about that in the first lesson a little bit. Um, when you pull in the black and I'm putting it in, I really don't think I can get that full 10. And then, um, let me see. So, because I'm teaching a class too, um, I keep moving some things around that are normally not being moved. Okay. So, my value scales here, I think it's, cl it's close. It's, I think they're around a 9. It gets close to a 10. Here's a 10 with the pencil. I just think it's more about coverage. This is a 10 with a pencil. See the difference? And this pastel uh, thing, is it has a little bit of green in it. It's not as pure black and white as I would like. So the pastel pencils reads a 10. And so you can see the actual paper is probably an, an 8. So I hope that helps. Don, we're talking about using alcohol to make the gold, I am going to try it with white, but what do you use to scrape the pastel out of the pan? I'm a bit nervous, I will break it. Um, I actually use, I have it right here. So I have my pan. I, I bought, to be quite honest, I bought a whole separate um, gold for this. Um, when I did first initially use it, I scraped off very gently. And I, I just take a, I have to be really careful and pay attention here. I got a exacto knife. So I actually took the back of the, a knife and I, and I scraped it off really lightly like this. And then I took it and you can fold a piece of paper and dump it in there and then put it into your container or you can then dump it into your container. So um, I hope that helps. And I will put that over there so I don't injure myself. Hey y'all, have fun. I'll have to, oh, hello Helene, welcome. It looks like you're leaving, you're watching after work. Um, my last couple of posts from the last two lives not going through, I hope I'm not blocked. What do you mean um, your last couple of posts? Do you mean comments? Um, I'm seeing your comment right now, so um, I don't know what happened there. So you're not blocked. <laughs> I'm wondering if you're talking about comments. So it looks like you're leaving, but definitely, you know, you can always email me. You can, um, I'm at Dawn. Well, it's art at dawnvanderstoop.com. You can email me if you have any questions too, but welcome here. Ah, uh, yes, the wolf um, gets to the black. That's not the wolf. I just use the, um, I use this, the black uh, pastel pencil. So um, that's the cool thing is this is the Carbothello. And it's the black, and so if you don't use like the Diane Townsend uh, sticks, um, th this is a great. This is just the um, the Stabilo. The Wolf pencil doesn't cover as much like the um, uh, pastel pencil. It's a little rougher on here. It's a harder. This is a harder. Um, car it's carbon, so it's not pastel, and it, it doesn't have as good coverage as the um, black pas um, pastel pencil.
All right, so I'm gonna go in here with a little bit lighter wand and fix my little light spots there. A little bit of that orange. And I'm gonna have to play around with this spot here. So I know I was cruciforming out with this right here. Um, I'm just going to erase a little bit and I think I'm gonna put like black scribbles in there. And then I can bring some of this orange in here. And then I can connect these two a little bit too. So I just start putting lines in to just to start breaking things up because I'm going to go work with the pencils here in a minute. I appreciate you guys' patience. I hope you, um, you uh, can see the value in being able to change and make, make up, you know, kind of if you don't have your mind made up and um, see how flexible the, the pastel is. So I'm just adding a little bit of white onto these to create a tint because that's all it is. So I'm going over to diarolide. That's going to end up being a diarolide tint. And I like having the painterly look. So, um, Doing one like your girl with the wild hair. I told hubby I wasn't being able to get the whimsy in the hair. He asked how many times many I've done. I said, first one, do a hundred. He said, smarty pants. I think he hurt you. <laughs> yep, you gotta like, that's like uh, six years of just pastels. So definitely be patient with yourself, Laura. And you know, you guys, um, I'll, 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 I'll go on the other chat real quick. I wanna think about um, this thought real quick. I also started incorporating a lot of drawing in my downtime, like in bed, um, I would draw. And I'm not talking full on like, uh, you know, finish a whole piece at night. But what I did was, is that I, I all these people are doing these like competitions, like drawing, you know, a hundred days in a row and doing all these things. And they were really overwhelming to me and I could never finish them. And so what happened was, is I finally made my own little challenge. And it was all about just, I, I finally was like, what can I achieve every day that would be reasonable for a rule? And the only rule, what, what the most problems that I had was, was basically just showing up, like grabbing the paper and, or showing up to the easel or showing up. It's 90% of, of the resistance is just showing up. So, I ended up challenging myself to draw a circle every day, at least a circle. And I did that for um, a while and it worked. And I would say the only time that I ended up not drawing was probably, I could probably count like maybe 10 days that I just did a circle. But most of the time it wasn't about completing a drawing. It was just drawing, scribbling, doodling, whatever came out, it was almost very intuitive 
and um, it wasn't perfect and uh, it was very powerful and I ended up doing that for a year and a half. It changed my life. It really did. Um, I think drawing, what it does, it's not about like, like professional drawing. <laughs> What drawing does is kind of greases the wheels of ideas and um, that's where I get my ideas is I'm just drawing and then I'll go, oh, I really like this from this drawing. Why don't I play off that a little bit? And my drawings are simple. They're not uh, really detailed, rendered out. A lot of them are, are just really um, uh, just the, you know, more like a doodle vibe than um, a full fleshed out drawing. So. It's something to think about because that's where I get a lot of my ideas is taking that time to draw and that's where all the whimsy comes from. So maybe that'll inspire you guys to draw more and I literally just use my um, a 9 by 12 Strathmore tracing paper pad and then what's cool about that is when I get a cool drawing and I like it, I can go flesh it out a little bit more with another layer of, of the tracing paper, or I can um, just trace it straight on. And I've, I've already got something done and that time feels like it got val was valued. You know, I didn't like waste time or whatever. So I hope that might inspire you guys a little bit because I really feel like that fleshed me out as an artist. So, so I got an ad here um, let's see, it's 218. And so it's an interesting one for Mint Mobile. Um, so I've skipped that. <laughs> so, um, thank you for your patience. I'm going to figure out the ad thing next time. I think I'll select where I can try to add them myself and we'll see how that goes. So, oh, it looks like, let's see here. I love that, Laura, about your husband. <laughs> Tell him I said hi. <laughs> That's awesome. Luis, I used it with the black. It was pretty cool. Okay. Yeah, the, the, the alcohol on the black is pretty amazing. I'll show you guys something really quick. I know I'll, I'll try to, I might not finish everything today, but um, this is a woman I have in process. Um, and that is the, um, gold on the black. So I'm really excited about her. I put the black down first. And then if I want it to stay, I, I might spray some fixative on it and put a layer, but that was actually painted on. So I didn't feel the need to do that. So I actually used a little paintbrush with that. temple drawing like that changes your brain how you see and and your memory of the movements totally and sometimes I would use like um, some resource images sometimes I, most of the time I just showed up and let it come out and I almost think it was like um, journaling like it was healing for me and then that's how I ended up doing my um, uh, I ended up doing that and then that's how I uh, did all of my um, on the tone gray or the tone cream, I mean, I ended up um, doing the gold on there and I would take my drawings and render out the ones that I liked. And um, it really changed my life, totally changed my life. So the hair is great. Thank you. I just did this yesterday morning, a picture of a fishing boat, super loose, but I may frame it. Funny how that works. Welcome, Sherry. I don't think I've seen you in chat before. I'm glad that you've done that and you're going to go try it out. That's awesome. Oh, wow. Bling, bling. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Francine. Thank you, Temple. Love the movement and her golden tresses with the black gold strands. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. Um, she's a, a piece that I'm really excited about. And um, I haven't had a lot of uh, downtime to be able to do that because on my own time I'm working on the class so so you can see how I'm just starting to put some layers in here I know we're going to do the the pencil throw down I think that's going to be we have 230 um 
and 3.30. So I think I'm going to start that in a few minutes. And I'm going to get this up to as far as I can with the pan pastel first. And then that's going to help me um, with some of these transitions. So I'm going to... I'm going to start bumping a little bit of color next to these so I can actually... Um, melt some of it in, if that makes sense. Are we going to get another hint on the class? Pretty please. Oh, Laura. Okay. Um. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I'll think about that. I'll think about my hint. <laughs> oh, listen to you guys. Um, well, you guys, I've already given the hint that it's called Nurture Your Joy. That was a hint because I have a, a, quite a few pieces named Nurture Your Joy. So if you followed me for a while, you would know that. It is going to be um, foliage and fauna, flower, flowers and foliage. And that's your hint. Lots of light, lots of color. And so I just love that it's going to be all about nurturing your joy. And um, it, it's probably going to be my favorite class that I've created. I'm having a ball. I've, I've, I've already finished filming the warm up. The I'm doing a really deep and um, a little bit deeper of a color mixing about the structure because I haven't done a class in over eight months. And um, usually um, I learn a lot within that time and I level up. So I'm pretty excited to be able to express myself a little even better um and so i can't wait can't wait to share it with you oh gg22 welcome to chat haven't had you in here oh yeah that's a great question i can totally answer that for you gg um number one is i would um do a return and i would ask for them to be replaced because um you shouldn't re receive them broken so definitely get them returned blick um, Amazon, Dakota, all of them, they will uh, re return them. Most of them will allow you to keep them. Maybe not Amazon, you might have to send them back. But um, I would do that for sure. Now, if they let you keep the uh, them, which Blick does, um, I'm not sure about Amazon. I haven't ordered on Amazon in a long time. So um, on Amazon, uh, if you, if you do end up keeping them, you just um, pat down the broken, get it smoothed out. Like some people have used a coffee tamper um, or a back of a, uh, you know, your hand, but you have to wash that off. Or like even a back of a spoon, just kind of get it tapped in there. And then you put alcohol in there and you get it creamy and then you level out the top and you let it dry. And then that will be a repaired pan. Um, I definitely have kept all mine that have come broken. I've had multiples come broken, um, but I always get them exchanged. So it's worth, it's worth to get them exchanged. Okay, so I'm going to go in here and let's see here. We've got a little bit more. Actually, I'm going to mix that with a phalo. I kind of got that little pattern going here. And then... Okay, I'm, I'm about ready to want to start doing the pencils so I can feel that. So sorry about your internet, Louise. I feel like I want to hit a little bit more 
orange on here, I'm just trying to find a spot. I think I'm just going to hit it in these little petals. And then that's going to bring up another color. It's going to actually make them a kind of a cool green. Okay, feeling pretty good about that. I'm gonna put a little bit of this green down here. Just work on the transition. Thanks for the hearts. Okay. So I always feel like I have to get it to a certain spot before busting out the um, pencils. hundred percent sure about that spot right there. I think I'm going to do this too, guys. I'm going to put a hole here and a hole here. And then I feel like that kind of goes like that, digging that. I think I'm okay with that. Oh darn, just a second guys. I'll be right back. I'm fixing my phone. Okay, so right here I'm gonna be playing with I think I might just hit a little bit of this in right here. So it kind of goes in like that. Okay. All right, so we're gonna, I'm gonna reset here a little bit. I'm gonna get a drink of water and then I'm gonna start bringing in some pencils. Do a little stretch. I've noticed if I don't do this, I am in trouble. <laughs> All right, and it gives me a chance to stand back a little bit. And I, and I want you guys to see how I took that orange and I brought it through the piece a little bit. And um, it's, definitely darker down here and I had you know I just started really putting some marks in and I and I don't have all of the plan but I feel like it's starting to come together and I've also brought up the piece it might you know even be I think really powerful to um share as we go along a little bit so you can just see that difference um 
I, I like to have the big wow at the end, but I, I think this is really powerful to kind of see where we're going here. And um, you can see how we brought that orange in and it's really warmed things up a little bit. The stems have changed and I'm just starting to kind of really get the, the feel of the whole thing. And nothing, I could stop here and call it done. I mean, I really could, but um, that's just not how I roll. So, so we have about an, an hour for the, the pastel pencils and I'm pretty excited about that. So I'm just, usually will grab pastel pencils that are in alignment with the colors that I'm using, maybe a little bit brighter, maybe a little bit, um, you know, just in different ranges. And to start is I just start. I just um, try to find one pencil that is speaking to me and then I'll start putting scribbles in. Now I, this is intended to be more of an abstract. So I'll probably go into some of the petals and try to merge them with the um, main concept here. And um, that's just fun for me. So for you, you know, on your journey is just really finding what um, speaks to you the most and makes you happy. And so a lot of times I'm following my joy. So if something has um, tickled me and I go, oh, I really like that. I mean, I have a background in mixed media, altered journaling, rubber stamping, graphic design. So those things with patterns and messiness are what I've pulled from all these years. And I like that. And I also have a perfectionism recovery <laughs> that I am constantly um, fighting against. And I think art has been healing me. I don't feel like I struggle with that um, at this stage in my life, but I feel like art was a big help for me in it because I just, I could have gone into a real realism type of world and um, I think I would have been good at it, but I realized I don't think it would have brought me the joy that I was looking for. So I go intentionally to make to make things messy or I, I don't even know if messy is the right word. I, I just try to break things up all the time. Um, anything that's getting too rigid, um, I will usually do that. So when I'm talking to you guys, a lot of times things, I'm just going for it. And uh, um, like, I really like these little green lines that I've put in, but see, I had to build all that up to get there and I'll start repeating patterns and things like that. And you can see the grid a lot more in this too. So like for the flowers, I have a lot of these really pretty purples. Let me see if I can. So my thought is I'm gonna actually bury out, you know, push back some of this black because it looks pretty um, strong. Oh my gosh, I got a snap, I got a Snapchat. Thank you so much, Daniela. I really appreciate you. Woohoo for the new class. Thanks for inspiring. Thank you, thank you. Uh, thanks for cheering me on. I really appreciate it. Give her love, you guys. Um, I think we can all heart it and like it. Thank you so much, Daniela. I really appreciate it. That's awesome. We have 30 people in chat today. That is a record for a Thursday. I'm so excited this channel's growing. Danielle, what? Helene, you're welcome. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, you guys. <laughs> I'm not crying today. I cried. I cried on the last one. You guys are really generous. Thank you so much, Helene. Give them guys some love. Daniela and Helene for the super chat. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. You guys are awesome. That's amazing. Um, <laughs> I should like have a whole little moment because I got to like reset myself. You guys are awesome. Thank you. So I'm um, just going to start bringing in some purples and some magentas and just see how it goes because I want to bring these flowers up and um, I, I don't know how it's totally, I don't have a full on plan here. I feel like this might be a little bit bright, but see, when you go a little bright, you can take and um, 
put the bright in and then go over it with a lighter touch with a lighter color. Sharon, welcome. So right now I'm just thinking up here, I don't mind if some of this, um, the black, I mean the black peeks through, I'm just burying a little bit of it. And I could even use my pan pastel on this part too. I have a little triangle that's clean, but I want that to be a little bit wider. I can just bring it up and it'll be a little bit easier. So I probably would spend a little bit more time bringing my values up a little bit. Thank you, Sharon. I really appreciate it. So I'm basically just making tints. And see, when you go back and forth like that, it, it, it even creates more interest too. So I, I really wanted to put a bright one on there. And I think what I'm going to use is more of these guys. I have these um, Caran d'Ache. And you can't get these colors in any other brand that I've found so far. Um, they are, uh, I'll give out the numbers here in just a sec. I'm trying to sharpen one of them. They're really hard to sharpen. I have to be really careful, but this is the uh, 788083, um, and then it's a 631. So you can see how they're up here already with the value that I'm working on. And they'll help me bury some of this black because they're really soft. Um, and when they're really soft, they can go on the upper layers without scratching in to the um, lower layers. I just think they, they hang out on the top a little bit more than I would like as much. So I end up using a lot of the other pencils. But once you build up with them, they're really, really l luscious and beautiful. So on this one, for instance, I could use a little bit of a darker and I can abstract that down to where they kind of merge a little bit and they're not as, um, I feel like my camera is a little cool today. I'm going to have to play around with manually adjusting my white balance. I don't know if that's spam, you guys. So we'll just have to see what that is. Hi, Claudia, you made it to a live. Welcome, welcome. Marianne, welcome. So glad that you're here. I'm not sure what that one is for the E on there. It could be spam. I, I might just, let's see what happens here. I think I can moderate that. I don't. 
yeah, I have to play with that and um, it won't let me do anything on here, but it'll allow me to do it on here. Let me see. I don't know what that is. English only if you're on here. So let's definitely, um, that's a great rule to have is English only because I can't um, understand what's being said. So that's why I've removed that. I think with growing, I'm gonna have a little bit more of that, guys. But I have an amazing community here that's gonna help me back, back me up. I'm so glad this is your first time here, Claudia. Okay, so I think I'm gonna play around here with just, whoops, when your pastel pencils, if they get messy, just go ahead and um, wipe them off on a towel. And then I'm gonna go into this light with this beautiful, um, it's 210 um, from Carbothello. and see how many layers I'm on. You know, I've already done quite a few layers here and that's just gonna really bring that light in there. Thank you, Danielle, I appreciate that. Yeah, it's great, there's so many new people. We've had so many new people here today. Marianne's from Norway. Wonderful. Welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. We have people from all over the world. It's, it's been really exciting. So I'll, I'll go in and touch some of this into my um, petals there. Just so it's like reflecting a little bit. And if I ever feel like I can't bury a line, sometimes a good tip would be... Um, is to just put an eraser in if it's too strong. This is my mono zero. And then I'll, I'll bury that um, manually. And what that does is, is it breaks up all those black lines there. See what the difference is on that, um, how it, it, it buried that? Sometimes the black lines just get a little heavy. And so, gosh guys, I don't, I'm gonna go a little longer today, I think, cause I don't think I'm gonna be able to. But those are also disappearing into the light and that's why I wanna do it to these petals. Gigi, she just joined a Facebook group. I'm so excited. I love your classes from Ivy Newport site. Well, welcome Gigi. I'm so glad that you're here. I almost have all of my classes on my site too. I have one that um, will be available on my site in about six months. Um, they have one that, that I don't have yet. So, um, but welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. Marianne. Yes, it's how much the time is there. Oh, you guys are chatting. Question, is it okay and allowed to try to paint some of your live paintings ourselves giving full credit to the originals? Yeah, I mean, these are just demos. Um, they're different from my classes, but um, I've had some people already uh, try to do them on their own. And um, I, I think that's great. Um, I definitely, if you're getting inspired to get in the studio and create and explore your own creativity, I definitely think uh, giving uh, credit to the original is perfect at helping advertise my lives is perfect. Say the person you learned it from, amazing. <laughs> so that helps me out a lot. And if you're inspired to do that, that's what I'm here for because I'm really trying to inspire people to um, love this medium as much as I do. So thanks for asking, Claudia. I really appreciate it. And you can always tag me and um, on uh, Instagram and Facebook and all that, and I'll come over and say hi. So I really appreciate that. 
Lori Michaels, Marianne, it's 245. Yeah, thank you, Lori. I appreciate that. I think I've answered everybody. I'm so glad that you're here. Okay, so you can see how I'm starting to bury some of these um, little petals. And I'm gonna tap this. I don't blow off in my studio. Um, I, I tap it and I try not, if I, I'm gonna bring it over here into my bin here. There's a lot of white on it. Okay. So I'm going to start working with these pencils and keep going what I'm doing here. I'm feeling pretty good about all that. We did this over here. I think I was really wanting to work with these petal right here. And like, this is just like the diarolide going over the green. It just creates this beautiful Kelly green vibe here too. And if you feel like you got it too much, I just tap it down a little bit there. And this is pulling out a um, black line from here. So if you ever have black lines that pop up, I'll just put use my eraser. Because for those of you who are new that are coming in here, I have um, made some changes. So I'm inspired to just have this light reflect onto the flowers a little bit here. So I'm mixing, I'm using the side of the pencil and then I'll also be able to kind of blend this petal in a little bit like it's part of the piece. Um, I, I like to do that. That's something that's really exciting for me. I'll do it even down here a little bit. I already did that side, so I'll probably do this right here. So I have a violet. It's a pretty powerful violet, but let's see how that works here. Maybe I'll just do this. Um, I don't think I'm going to hit that one. So this is a um, violet, it's a 385, and it is a really bold, beautiful vi um, violet color. It's actually, um, trying to find it. Well, oh, here it is. I actually have a list of them. It is the um, 385, but I love the name of it. It's it's called the Violet Deep. And I'm going to pop this around because I'm really liking how that looks. And I'll just start. So I'm barely holding it onto the um, paper. I'm just taking it on a journey. Do 
And the other thing is, is when you're new doing um, like abstracts and stuff like that or something new outside your comfort zone, don't think all of a sudden that you, you, you didn't do good or you hate it. Um, just be aware that it's something you haven't seen yourself create before. So you don't recognize yourself in it. And I learned this about myself doing on my own journey. And I was like, oh my gosh, I waited and a few days passed and I went and looked at it. And I was like, oh my gosh, I love it. I can't believe that I didn't like it. And um, we're just not used to sometimes seeing ourself in that work yet. And we have to catch up with that. So um, that's something to think about when you're trying something new. So you can see how I'm just, you know, taking these moments and um, bringing them in with uh, just pattern and um, squiggle lines and things like that. So I'm thinking about putting some um, foliage in here a little bit, like some... I don't want to go too bright. I feel like that's a little bright. Let me see what this one. These are all in the Carbothello families. It's a um, 585, a 575, and a 590. And I'm just making an impression that there's like and then I'll probably repeat that to um, maybe right here, but I need to go a little bit brighter. And even with this, you could, I could take the purple if I wanted a little bit more contrast here. And I can put these dots in. And then go around them. Really light. And if they get too bright or too bold, you can just tap them down a little bit. And so I have that cruciform vibe, really it's an undertone of that, plus my grid. And I think I'm gonna carry these up from this green spot. And you can see these are just really simple patterns that I'm going to change the sizes. And even if they're a little much, the cool thing is, is I could go, oh, well, that one was, some of these are just a little much and you can bump them down a hair here and there, you know, it's, and then that buries them a little bit too. And it makes them almost like you put a glazing layer over like an acrylic or you went over it in a layer and covered up a little bit. So like if I wanna bring back this purple spot and have it come forward, I can just go over it a little bit there. And then I can also um, use this as a stepping off point and then create, um, just trying to find the right pencil for it guys. I don't know why, but I'm on a pencil hunt again. So like, 
if I want to even this out and just have some fun and abstract, then I surround that pattern a little bit too. I'll leave that. And so how we have that stained glass look, I'll just start going over some of these lines and merging them with the pencils. And still letting things peek out, but it's just a little bit more where I can merge and make them be more harmonious in a relationship together. So I'm looking for my deep green and here it is. So this color, a lot of times I'll use pencils to match up my colors. Oh, I haven't even looked in chat. I'll look in chat in a second. I've been, you guys caught me in flow. So when I am not up with chat, I, so I'll find a color there that I like. And then, um, I'll bring that out and then that will lead me to the next step and to the next step. And this is real meditative. I, I usually try to uh, work in some type of meditative vibe in my work. Okay, I'm catching up on chat for a second here. It looks like there might have been a question from Mary Ann. Oh, here it is, Savannah so Night Night. Do you paint and draw? Okay, Mary Ann, I'm sorry if you could make your question a little bit more clear. I'm, I'm not sure if you're asking me if I paint and draw. Um, Claudia, she loves the erasing capability. I love it too. Um, well, I, I showed you, Laura, in the beginning, I did a whole little demo of the pastel mat with the um, uh, UART. I did a comparative. Here it is. And I'm able to erase. I just, um, I tried it out and I was able to, this is the pastel mat black and this is the UART. You just don't get as many layers. So definitely watch the beginning of the um, demo today because um, I want you to see what I did and how I use the eraser on that for some reason. Grabbing another eraser. Um, I was able to erase and still put something over it, but um, which surprised me. So, um, and, then I, and then I showed how I made an eye and I showed multiple different surfaces. So definitely if you missed that part in the um, demo, um, watch it because so I'm just taking the um, this beautiful 595 which is a uh, leaf uh, green deep and I'm incorporating that in and I'm really liking uh, how it's bringing some things together and um, I'm going to use it on the stem here and then bring it down here it's a darker value so it's helping me create a little bit of depth in some areas. Yeah, it's definitely not as good of an erasing um, paper that, than you are, not by any means, not by any means. I just thought of you today, Laura, and so I did the intro there um, with you in mind. So, um, so I'm going around and, um, thinking about where else I might want to put this fun green. So when I make marks with other pencils, it can help me decide what I want to put maybe in those spots. So the mark making is really fun for me. And, um, I think I want to play with this orange and bring this in a little bit more and pop it up with some of the uh, 
yellows. So um, I'm just using some Carvathellos. Um, this is the 690, a 215 orange, and the 221 orange. So I'm going to play with these oranges here, and I don't want to cross over here, but I think I'm going to put some mini little lines here. And then remember, you can wipe off your pencil. I think I'm going to just peek it out on this side so they're connected in some way. And then I'm going to bring up this flower edge a little bit. So I, I'm just putting some squiggles in because I like squiggles. If the squiggles are too much, I just bump them down a bit. this little guy here. I think I'm going to merge him into this. And I just, I think the biggest thing out of this demo that I want you guys to get from is just how much layering I'm doing and, and, and what it takes to get it to a spot. Like I'm going to show the piece at the very end. This is the, um, 570. And um, you're gonna see how much the layering really pays off. So I personally don't think, I rarely push my pieces I feel too far. And if you do feel like you've pushed it too far, you can always tone it down by erasing or, or knocking something down or taking something out. Like sometimes I might think these, these portals that I put in are a little too much, but and then I'll go and take a portal out, you know? So. Um, I, I set my whole creative process up for being over the top and I want, that's what the structure's for. So the structure's there so I can scrape and scribble and abstract it out. And if I didn't have the structure there, I wouldn't be able to do all this. So, um, that's pretty much what my whole process is about is setting myself up to do more things that bring me joy and scribbles and working with the pencils this way bring me a lot of joy. So I want to do more of it. And that leads me to make decisions and, um, in my creative process. And then that's how I ended up finding my style is because I just kept following that. And, um, I think you could, you really, instead of we can get really caught up in the comparison game and just really following your heart and figuring out what you really like when you're doing some of these can be really powerful. All right, I have this darker orange. It is really over here in this. Um, you start learning that they match up. So like this is the orange uh, shade. And so this is a 615 pencil. And they are really close in family. It, it's basically the orange uh, extra dark. So I think I'm going to play with this spot down here a little. I don't know. I'm not loving whatever I'm doing. You know what I'm going to do? I know what I'm going to like there. I'm going to put in this orange a little bit. Wait, I'm going to use black. And I'm going to hit this down a little bit. And then I'm going to merge it back and forth. And you can see I'm even going over some pencils. I, I like going over because I feel like it makes it more natural looking. You don't want things to look like that they're just hanging out on top by themselves. Um, that's why I go over and touch things over and over again. Well, thank you, Laura. Man, you guys, I am so stoked. Thank you so much for uh, um, uh, what do they call it? a super chat. 
I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Wow, this has been a good day for Super Chats. You guys are amazing. I really appreciate the support. I'm really enjoying being here with all of you. And my husband and I, we talk about it almost every night of just how much we're, um, uh, the community is amazing. And um, I think that's what I'm loving the most is the community. So um, thank you. Thank you, Laura. appreciate that. So I'm going to hit a little bit of this bright here. I know the eye is going to go there, but I'm going to try that out because we're, we're all trying to keep the eye coming through the piece and it's a little flat there. And so I'm just bringing it up a bit and then I'm going to take a black, um, I have to go back and forth for the fluff. I want it to look fluffy right here. That's awesome. Oh, I like the little, uh, oh, she's a fan. Number one fan. <laughs> That's awesome, Laura. Thank you so much. So I'm playing with this area. I'm going back and forth with it because once I do what I'm going to do, I'm not going to want to touch it again, really. So I'm looking at it and I'm like, I like things to go in to the paper. And so I'm putting it dark back there. And I could touch more on that too and make that another spot. But what I'm going to do is take and put some of these little, I've got to unload my hand full of pencils. And um, I'm going to just put some black. I don't think I'm going to put like stars in this piece but I'm just gonna take and put some black dots that come out of this little area. And then I could put some black in this back area there to really punch it through a bit. Let me see. I'm hitting it with my finger just because I can. <laughs> And you can see how I'm creating like a, a, a place back there. Like I like to punch through the paper like it's a universe. That's just part of my style. And I want it blended so I'm using my fingers. So I can make some different size dots here. Luis, I've seen that brand as well. Never tried it. Some of their products are great quality. Okay. Have you tried Art Spectrum Paper, Dawn? It's an Australian brand. Looks similar to UART. Easier to get here, but still quite expensive. Okay. I have, I'm actually going to be taking a stick pastel class here and um, not this weekend, but next weekend at Dakota Pastel. Um, and I'm, I just bought a whole bunch of Art Spectrum. I have used Art Spectrum. Um, I've used it on a couple pieces and I felt um, it was a little rough. There is an Art Spectrum Fine that I just discovered that um, I would want to test out. I didn't buy any sheets of it, but I know there you have to read close when you buy Art Spectrum. They're, they even have paint that you can paint down, but I know it does get used a lot more by stick pastelists, but I haven't tried the Fine yet. I kind of feel like the Fine might be a little bit like the... Um, pastel matte, but I'd have to try it out. So I'm going to be going not th this week, but next week, and I'm going to the Dakota pastel store in real life. And you know what? I think I'm going to grab um, some sheets of that so I can try it. And I'm going to be at this um, pastel. I'm going to be using sp um, the art spectrum paper for the class because it's all sticks. But uh, I want to branch out and s s practice using the sticks a little bit more and I'm just excited about learning that so I'll have to get back to you on that if you get it and you can just get a couple sheets I would try it out so you can see how those little black dots I think really add a lot to that right there and then I can repeat that in a few places like right here and I always will try to repeat something multiple times along the way. Now you guys would tell me if I had pastel on my face, right? Because 
That's like my worst thing is I, my hands are dirty folks and I always itch my face. Um, so I can repeat that right here and knock it down a little bit. And then I can even go in one more spot. I'll usually pick like something else. So like right here, how it's going into the black. Are you guys feeling the abstract yet? I hope you guys are digging this. Um, but what it is, is all those stages we did lead me to this stage, which is my favorite. And I just love, you know, the mark making part of it. And I think that's why I've stuck with the pencils so much and the pan pastel is because of this whole vibing. This, this, this vibe is what I really, really love. And so um, I'm gonna, I feel like I've, I, I don't mind here. I think I might put like, let's see what happens when I just do a bright circle. Yeah, I don't mind that. Now I'll repeat that. I might do it. And this is uh, the, the 221. And see how I repeat that along the way. Okay, Luis, I've seen that brand as well. Never tried some of their products are great quality. And as, and has both rough and regular and smooth and black too. And the smooth was developed with pan pastels. Yeah, I wanna try that Temple. It sounds like you have read a little bit more about that. Lucky me. Are you talking about the class I'm going to? I'm so sorry I'm behind on chat, uh, Laura. I have a pack of the black smooth I'm gonna try soon. It takes pan pastel and pencil and doesn't chew up the soft tools too bad. So Temple, I'm really curious, you know, I don't know Temple, I don't think you might be on Facebook in my Facebook group. Um, I would love to see what you think of that if you can layer that up and that's why I wanna get it. Thank you, that'll be really interesting here. I'll investigate too. I'm so digging it. Mark making is my jam as well. Right on, Francine. I love the radiant abstract, the tile appearance. Thank you, Loretta. Laura's digging it. The orange pencil as a bit of the orange pencil as a bit of sparkle. I totally agree. Hi, Deanna. Welcome. I'm getting your painting ready to ship. I'm probably going to ship that out tomorrow on Friday, and I'm getting it all ready for you. I'm so excited for you to see it in person. Thanks again. And um, yeah, I can't wait for you to see it in person. So it is fun to go to Mothership. Last year I went to Cheap Joe's and Boone and had a moment. They have, have fun at Dakota Pastel Mothership. I think that's what you're talking about too. Yeah, I can't wait to go to, I've never been to Dakota, like a designated pastel store. So I'm pretty excited about that. Sherry, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here in chat, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. Now, if you guys, if you haven't followed, please follow me here on um, YouTube. Like, like my posts, that really helps me, the, the lives. And if you ever watch replays or anything like that and can leave a comment after, that is a wonderful way to support me for free. I really appreciate it. And then everyone, if uh, for those of you who are new, I'll have it in the description below, but I also have a free Pan Pastel membership library on my uh, website. And um, it has some extra things in there, some classes with some line art. And then um, if you sign up for that, you'll be in my newsletter and you'll get notified when my new class releases. So definitely um, we'll get you in the loop. Sherry, best therapy session ever. That's awesome, I'm so glad you think that. My, my Siri came up for some reason, and then I just said it again. Um, all right, so I'm feeling pretty good about it. I'm so glad we have so many new people here today. That is just awesome. And I'm, I'm gonna play with this a little bit right here. Kinda like that. I feel like I wanna merge these a little bit. It's 
So what I'm doing here is I, I find this spot a little too jarring. So I'm just trying to put some colors here together that would harmonize them a little bit more. This is a, um, this is in the yellow ochre family, the yellow oxide, it's a 690. It's actually quite neutral compared to those. I think I want a brighter yellow orange. Here it is. Oh, I think I just bumped my whole thing here. It's weird, I swear it was. There you go. All right, I'm liking this little moment here. This is a, um, a 210. It's just a little brighter and this is how I kind of bring things up a bit. I have a few lines up here I'm trying to I don't want to go too crazy down here. I kind of dig that though. If I can find a happy medium, maybe I'll put some of that orange in there or this dark, dark orange. No, I want to go up with the orange, orange and kind of bring this out a bit. I'm going to sharpen these um, green that I have. Thank you, Daniela. I'm glad you're digging it. We're going to have the big uh, before and after reveal coming up here soon. And I definitely going to clean up my studio. I probably it's, it's been the most, um, disheveled it's ever been. I want, before we go, I think I want to do something to this guy and I would probably spend more time building up their layers. I have those two pencils I called out earlier with the, um, this is the, uh, 631 
Don, I think one of your best suggestions was a few weeks ago when you suggested making a collection of marks and shapes that we were fond of to use as a resource. You know, Deanna, I, I can't stress that enough because everyone's mark making is going to be a little bit different. And I think if you want to find your own mark, it also is actually making the paintings too because you can practice in there because I think um, sometimes we intellectualize so much, but when, when you are creating a piece and you find a um, mark that you like, like logging it in a, a journal is a great one too. It just makes you more self-aware of what you're liking and what you're not liking. Um, I find I do a lot of scallops, um, a lot of circles, a lot of dots. I think I'm going to blend these two a little bit. I'm okay with that. But I want the flowers to be a little bit more part of the whole thing. So that's, but then I also don't want to lose um, it too much. You know what I mean? Like, so I have, it's 323. I think I'm going to go a little bit longer today. So I know some of you guys might not be able to stay as long, but um, Thursdays kind of can be that way because I definitely want to finish this. And I have some of these lines that I feel like I could bury a little bit more. I've always loved the ginkgo leaves and trapezoid shapes. Anyone else have the same favorite shapes? So now that I've found this pencil, um, it was the one that I, I think I was looking for. I know that that's the one I want to transition some of these really strong spots. And you can see how that value is really there and it's gonna help me transition some of that. I really like that spot there, so I'm not going to touch it. Well, just a little bit right there. So if anything, this shows you how much layering I do to get where I'm going. Okay, so I'm going to focus on this a little bit more here. And I could bring out some of the glow a little bit more with this bright fuchsia. Just hitting that on a few spots here. And then I'm thinking, you know what? I really don't have that in a ton of places around here. So that can make me make a decision to put it around here a little bit.
Is the Facebook group private? I did a silly owl, but shy to share unless it's private. Um, I only let people in there that are approved. So I don't know how you feel about that. Um, so it, they all have to be approved to come in. I don't let like anybody in there that I usually will go check them if I don't um, know them and I have questions to answer to there. That kind of filters a lot of that. So definitely only do what you're comfortable with, but. So you can see how the mark making leads me to making decisions that allow me to be a little freer and to play and to bring out that kind of child inner child I always want to try to find that person in me and bring bring her out to play and I I think that's what this is about for me is just tapping into that inner child I'm going to put So at 3.30, I will show you guys the before, the after. And then if you guys want to stay while I finish up a little bit more, um, feel free. But I will keep us on time for showing the, the before and after. This spot's a little busy, so I'm just trying to figure it out for myself. Sometimes on those moments, I'll do something like this. I'll take a magenta. This happens with a stick too. And then I'll just put a dot in there. And then I'll... All right, Sunny was, was barking away. <laughs> so hopefully that didn't get you too much. Let's see. Ha ha, they'll be impressed that I did post, laugh out loud. I might do when I get home. Well, I hope to see it, Helene. I, I love that we're trying to create a safe place for people to share their art. Doesn't matter what medium it's in. Um, so I, I hope you'll feel comfortable to, to post in there. So I'm just going through and I'm feeling pretty good about the whole abstract. There's, I, I, I kind of want to play with a little bit right up here a little bit too. I'm looking to see on my screen if there's anything that's really um, out there. I might take some um, pan pastel and go over a couple spots just to um, break them up a bit. And um,
Okay, so it's 3.30. I'll, I'll show you guys where we're at and how far it's come. And, um, and then I'll work on it for a little while longer. And um, just so you guys have something, because I always like to show the before and uh, where we've gone and where it's gone. So um, here's where we were, where I started. And um, there's that. And then this is where it's gone. So you can see the journey. <laughs> and I feel like, well, my print is pretty bright, but um, I, uh, you can see how much depth and detail and how I've kept that kind of grid underneath lying down in there. I might um, fix a couple little things, but um, you can see how I tried to work on bringing the flowers and this is a real stained glass look. And um, what I do is when I come back, I spend a lot of time um, trying to harmonize. So you go from the blocking end stage into um, the next layer. That's why I have to do have a paper that works on multiple layers is um, then I'm going and I'm harmonizing that all together. So I know my print's a little bit well, it's not too off from the color, but so then I spend those times taking and breaking down some of these lines and bringing them together and abstracting them out. And um, so I would say we probably have, I probably spent an hour on it fixing it and drawing up that thing, but for two sessions, it's probably at least a, a four hour piece that, um, and that uh, definitely takes time and all the layering. So. I'm, uh, let's see. Thank you guys so much. I'm glad you're liking it. Hi, Stacy. She's going a little long today, so you can get some. Wow, this is so nice. I'll have to replay it. I love the colors. They're really popping. Oh, man, I missed it. So sad. Well, I'm going a little long today, Stacy. I'm glad that you're here, though. Welcome, welcome. And um, let's see. Hopefully... Good stuff. Let's see what that. Okay, Louise said, oh wow, I love the before, but the after is incredible. The colors are so juicy. Thank you so much. Thank you, Deanna. Thank you, Peg. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is a nine by 12. I, I can't work on any bigger. Um, Chrisella, thank you about the revision to the flowers. You know, it, it's worth it that, you know, I just took some time. I used the drawing paper and um, fixed them. Um, learned a lot about, you know, I always learn something about myself in these too. And so I hope um, you guys have enjoyed it. So I'm just going to do a little bit more here. And um, for those of you that want to stay, feel free to stay. And um, I'm just going to... Uh, play around with a little bit more and I'd probably do that because I want to finish these up and so um, I'd probably do it anyway and I'm just going to start harmonizing some colors that aren't necessarily uh, there. I might even take this and this and create that up here because I want a little bit of that violet in there and I do think this I didn't use this permanent green a lot so I'm going to bury some of those you see me looking over I'm just looking on a computer screen because it really helps me um, bring some uh, see how things are Oh, Stacy's staying. I'm so glad you're staying. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so glad you guys like it. Um, this was, I actually did this one uh, three years ago. I think it was three years ago. I don't think I have the, um, the old one around here with me right now. But um, yeah, it's fun to see how you grow or how you change things and things like that. So I'm going to go for a lighter wand because I'm going to work in this spot right here. I might feather this out just a little bit. I was even thinking, I don't know if it would be cool or not. 
So this is a good example. Like I'm not about like trying to finish a painting to the end and get to the end. Like, like I'm at this stage, I could hang out in here for quite a while. Um, so when I do things, I, I'm just doing them because I'm having a great time. And so a lot of people will be like, how do you know when to stop? I don't know. I think I just know when I'm done, when I look at something and even tomorrow, if I go look at this and found that, um, there was something that I felt was a little much, then I could change that. So this is an eraser on top. I'm kind of curious to what this will look like. I might even, I had a, um, mechanical eraser, not a mechanical, a, a battery powered one. And um, yeah, just a heads up, I do have one of my sons that might be coming home. And so if my dog barks, that's what you're hearing. Hence why I plan my live streams at the times that they are. I'm just going to see what this looks like. It's not going to stay. I can even change it back. I'm just curious. <laughs> I got you guys hooked. <laughs> I'm going to see what this looks like. I might put these as black and then see. Twenty seven still here. That's awesome. You guys, you guys, I appreciate your support so much. So just know if we don't like this, I, I can always change it back, but I'm going to play around with it. Man, I'm getting a lot of hearts. Thank you guys. This is that carbon pencil that's a little harder. All right. I feel like I might want to put one a little bit closer in. Let's see if I just put it in there. Hi, Cameron. I'm going a little long today, just so you know. Athena, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I don't know if you've been in chat yet today, so thanks for saying hi. Okay, so now I'm going to go and play around with my pastel pencils with that. And um, I'm just going to see what happens. I don't know if I'm... Thank you, Cameron. I appreciate that. It's okay. I sleep with him, my hubby. Oh, what did I miss? What did I miss? Luis. Doesn't look like, oh, okay. I'm supposed, Dawn has us hooked. I'm supposed to be working. It's okay. I sleep with him, my hubby. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. I think I might pop this bright yellow in here. Now, when you do something like this, it could take a minute for it to vibe, or I might just erase it and put it back. I, I don't know yet.
They have these really soft. Um, this is that uh, 83. And it's a Karen Dash. They might be a little too hard, a little too bold. And, and maybe it's just too many of them. Watch. Let me do this. Maybe I, I think I might have just liked it better without him. But I, you know, what I like is that you can, you can do something like this and see if you like them. I think I'm going to take them off. I thought I liked it. Even if I sat with it for a second, I, I don't think so. But watch how I can go back forward out is that I can just easily. So that's how I'm testing stuff out, you guys. So I'll be like, well, you know, I could just leave that, you know, one or two up here and let's see what that looks like. Luis, <laughs> you also pay the wages. You guys are funny. Okay, so you can see how I went back on that and that's totally fine. And then I can even um, use a lighter wand if I have one available. And I have one in this hand. And then I can just go in and um, tap in some of my favorites. And you know, even these moments, sometimes uh, something will happen. Like um, I've put this this uh, diarolide down, and maybe it does something that um, I wouldn't have expected before. So you know, sometimes when you change something and just try it, you you might be surprised. So. And then I go and hit white on top. And that'll make it into a tint. So that's going to be the diarolide tint. Oh, we just have one little lonely one there. I, I, I covered up the other one by accident. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I should leave the lonely one up there. Okay. I don't know. Do I like that real bold? I kind of like that. The other thing I'm learning is to not touch everything, but that is a journey. Leave it sunny. Just leave it. You're fine. I don't know. I kind of, I kind of like that one little thing hanging out there. So what I'm going to do is, is just, I'm going to tap this off on my tray there. Nope, it's still on there pretty good. I'll be right back. I'm just going to tap it into this tray. There, I got most of it off. So you can see in those last moments, like some of those little Things are really cool. I do think that just is really distracting. <laughs> so I'm going to take that out. Um, but you don't know. You just got to hang out with it for a bit, right? And then I'll, you know what? Maybe I'll put another one of those, um, these yellow uh, diarolide marks in there. And that's kind of cool. I, I kind of feel like it goes boom, 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 like right there. 
I'm digging that. So see, I wouldn't have done that if I didn't go do all that. And I wouldn't have merged this corner. And I really think I like the corner a lot better. And um, I think what I want to do is I want to play with this spot real quick because I kind of want to blend this, tone this down a bit. Just leave it sunny. The neighbors are outside and he can hear them. <laughs> Yeah, Stacy, that's what I'm hoping, you know, is through these like lives that you guys can um, uh, really see how I, you know, try things out. And I think after years and years of using the um, medium, it, you just kind of, um, you get more confidence in that. I think I really like how that shadowed out that last flower and I'm going to do it here. Okay, that's my son. I'm just going to mute me for a second. Okay, it looks like uh, we're in the clear now. So you can see how I can just play and have fun because I have this structure and then I have all the layering capability. So it allows me just to really get it until my heart is content. And um, I like how I push those back. I'm gonna merge this those two here. I'm gonna play and blend that in so they're they're kind of merged so they lose an edge and you know one of the design tools with um you know creating is like the edge the line and sometimes you know it's really powerful to break up a line and um, i think that's what i'm really starting to enjoy a lot out of um, discovering that and I really love breaking up some of these lines and having them, you know, almost float off into the piece. And I think that's really exciting. Um, so that has pushed that petal back and then I can even go and um, take some of the violet if I wanted to. And bring those together a little bit and it's those little subtle moments you know like i think those are really powerful and then when you start finishing things up you start seeing more things um, that you want to work on i i love details but that almost put me into a state of unhappiness because of the perfectionism so I get my details out this way by going back and then taking all of this structure I broke up and then just pushing back with, with value um, some of these little spots. And I think it's really um, more powerful than sometimes I give credit for. You know, it's like you, those moments in a piece to me end up finishing it out in a way that I don't think I would have done if I didn't take the time. And so some people are like, well, I just don't know how to stop. Like, when is it too much? Well, I got told a lot, you know, in my life that I was too much. And I just think when you feel good, you stop because I'm over that. My art is my safe place where I get to do whatever I want. And, um, and I think, uh, that's what's kind of built my structure up the way it has. 
So I'm just taking edges away and, um, and putting some value in some spots to really um, create a little bit of that tension and that um, little pops of, of depth. Ditto on lost edges. Yeah, lost edges are magical, you guys. Oh, temple. Yeah, I used to have a Maltese when I was growing up. The magenta's doing it for Deanna. I'm so glad. Tuesdays and Thursdays are leftover nights here just for Dawn. Oh, I love that, Laura. I love that. I wrote that down when I first met you on here. I was like, that is the sweetest thing. My husband and I talk about that all the time. So you can see how it's just starting to really kind of get its its edge here. And I'm feeling pretty good. Like, I think this is where I start going, okay, how do I feel? I feel a little bit like this black line up here is just hanging out. Um, I feel like I want to re replicate it somewhere. So I might just do one down here, a, bi a bigger one. So I have that, that, and then I'm going to go into the side here. So that's going to give us some repetition there. And then I could even thin out my, sharpen up my piece. And then I could add a little thin line. So lines, you know, making them thinner and thicker can be really powerful too. And then if, if I find like maybe that's a little much here and I, I want to mess it up a little bit. So see how I'm breaking that up. It looks like I have a little add. <laughs> I'm going to skip that. Okay. So you can see how then once I've put those lines in, then I'm going to break up an edge. And um, I think that that little moment's kind of magical. So it's it's realizing when to do it and just it just takes practice but and so i feel like this spot's a little busy but i think i'm just gonna go with it i think it might calm down a little if i buried this edge so i might i might try something We'll see. And I might take out a little bit of this. So bear with me on that. Usually if something keeps nagging at me, like um, if I keep looking at it and I'm like, eh, 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 then I'll, I'll do something about it. Thank you, Lori. Lori, I like how you got your name in front of your O shiny. That's new. I'm mixing in a little bit of that diarolide so it's not so flat. And then I think what I'm gonna do is act like there's some reflection in here and hit this edge. And purple and yellow are complementary, so playing around in that family can be pretty powerful. I'm going to have to bring it up, so I'm going to make these into tints here a little bit. So we can't make the gap too big in the sense of transitioning from um, one spot to another. And so I'm trying to even out the, the values. And I'm using this, this uh, turquoise mixed with magenta makes a really pretty violet too. And that I have magenta in here, I think that would, um, I don't have turquoise in the piece, but I'm using it to mix. I'm gonna go a little bit lighter.
So you can see how I've brought that up to a similar value than the background, and that puts it on the same plane. And I have to do a little bit of wiggling back and forth. That's just part of the game here. I think I'm going to hit this with um, the orange. There we go. And I'm going to put a little bit of that somewhere else too. And maybe a little bit on this edge. I'm looking at that in the light. Uh, I like that. I feel like um, I can pop some of that diarolide to bring the orange up a hair. And then I can even merge those guys. So you can see how I've built kind of a foundation there to um, do all this stuff. And now this is really hanging, sticking out at me now. So it goes from one thing to another. Um, I'm going to put a little bit more light in this one. So you can see how the pastels, the pencils, and we go back and forth. And then I can realize, well, I want to pull out a highlight right here to really make that look curved. I'm going to put a highlight on this one. So I'm using white now, pretty pure, because I know that's going to pop that. And then I'm going to go right here. So I really like I really like that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take my little tiny eraser. Oh my gosh, it's four o'clock. See, look how much time we can do. So I'm almost done. I I got 25 of you guys still on here. You guys are awesome. <laughs> oh my goodness, thank you so much. You guys are cool. So I am gonna bury this little petal, and um, it's gonna look like it's floating on into the abstract, and I like that. That's something that's just personal preference. Um, I dig that. So that's how I'm making this more and more and more abstract. I could even go more crazy. So I'm gonna work on this little spot right here, and then I'm gonna probably wrap it up. What happens is, is my body feels it later, is, is you just sit there and um, two hours is about what my body can handle standing because I stand. I, I work at an easel because of my back. It sure makes my back feel better. So this spot was really bothering me. So I'm just bringing that in and I really like that already. That changed. This diarolite is really powerful and fun. I'm just really loving it. I used to put yellow oxide or yellow ochre in this spot and um, I'm really liking the diarolide. So that's kind of carrying that cruciform over a little bit too. And then um, just using that pencil, it's a 221. Just leave it sunny, you're fine.
Thank you for the hearts. I can always see them out of the corner of my eye. So you can see all those little moments that I'm creating here that if I would have stopped at 3.30, you wouldn't have seen. You know what I mean? Like, and then I'll show the before and after again so you can kind of see what it did. I'm gonna put one more pencil on top of that. Um, I'm gonna put the yellow so it looks a little bit more I love the hearts. Thank you. I'm leaving that little dip in there. I like that. So I like to emulate like there's light coming off on these. I feel like I've really captured that here. I'm gonna put this right here. All right, so let me knock this off real quick. I'm gonna put it back on and then I'll show a little before and after. I just have a bin here that I can really. So I'm really hoping that this journey took you to um, give yourself more permission to try these fun layers and um, and to just try to find your own mark making without like trying to have it all figured out like just the more you do the more the mark making just comes intuitively like trust your intuition and whenever something's just hanging out and you feel like a lot of that is just breaking down lines and merging them into the same plane. And um, that's what I think the mark making is all about on my personal journey. So I hope that this has inspired you guys to um, bust out your soft pastels, get in the studio and show up. And if you wanna make yourself a challenge, just challenge yourself to, to make a mark on, a, on the paper every day. Um, even if it's just a circle, even if it's just a pan pastel swipe, um, what that does is it just, it just loosens up your brain and gets you uh, in that routine to showing up because 90% of the journey is just showing up. So I hope today has inspired you guys. I'm gonna read through the comments here real quick before I say goodbye. And um, let's see here. Thank you, Stacy. I'm glad you like the black editions. <laughs> yeah, I wish you guys all that have to work that you could just be at my lives all the time. That's really sweet. <laughs> I'm retired and spend most of my time doing art. My husband's my Biggest fan, I'm blessed. You know, Laura, it, that's really special. I'm glad you have that. That's really sweet when our spouses can support us. I just want to drink coffee and make pretty things, Stacy. We know how to hang and chat. No, I'm loving you guys. This community is awesome. We still have 25 here and I haven't even signed off yet. Coffee, the only one in the morning. I'm up all night. Yeah, I can only have one, one tea in the morning. I drink chai tea. And I um, have one. If I have two, I just I just can't do it. Laura's a, a night owl. She likes working while the world sleeps. Temple, thanks so much, Don. Love the painting. So good to experiment. I'm so glad you're here, Temple. You always, I mean, all you guys are just bright spots in, in the live. So I'm so glad you show up. I know this is a weird time, but it's been really working out for a lot of us. Chrisella, thank you so much. She said, fantastic. Um, she missed 80% uh, Stacy. Well, enjoy the replay. And um, 
Laura says, this is my favorite abstract I've seen you do. Well, thank you. Yes, get to it and do it. I love that. All right, you guys. Thank you, Francine. I'm so glad that you liked the piece. Peg, thank you so much. So I'm not sure what we're going to do next week, but um, I think I'm going to have next week, I'm going to come up with a plan because I will be gone the week after. So what I'll do is I'll have... Um, thumbnails showing the date that I'll be back and um, I will be doing pastel so uh, I'm excited to share some of my stories when I get back from that so I'll be here next week and I'll see you guys on Tuesday live so take care have a great weekend join my Facebook group share your work oh and I've loved all of the dogs and the pets and and everyone sharing them I've commented I think on almost all of them if you want to share your pet I love um, really being able to see them who we're talking about. Um, so that's been fabulous too. So thanks for sharing everybody. All right, you guys take care and, um, have a great weekend. All right. This has been fun. Bye.